today is exile day for housing tours um, as this is Wednesday and um, the usual time for us to show off houses. Um, hold on a second, I've got to reply to somebody. <laughs> So um, first, before we get started, I just want to make a couple of um, reminders. Um, and just recently, Wildstar, or I should say Carbine, um, announced that they have uh, officially opened the free-to-play closed beta. Uh, there's a link on my uh, Twitch channel page um, to a little article all about it with all the links to the back page and uh, where you can sign up if you want to try and join the beta. Um, currently it's closed so it's uh, mostly just uh, if you're a subscriber already you should have access and for those that are non-subscribers uh, I assume they will be um, issuing invites and allowing uh, waves of people to come in um, in increments of who knows what. Uh, hey Samson, and hello to anyone else that happens to be watching right now. I don't keep my uh, viewer list uh, open, so the only way I know that you're there is if you say hello in the chat. Um, but uh, for the lurkers, you know, it's not required that you say hello. Um, it's perfectly fine if you just want to lurk. Um, anyway, that's one thing. Um, so if you uh, have been um, kind of on the the fence about whether or not you want to try Wildstar now is a perfect opportunity to give it a go. Um, granted, it's a closed beta, so there's a lot of features that might be kind of wonky here and there, and there's a lot of things that uh, may have like limited access. Um, but uh, it's a, a good chance to get to see um, where they're going with certain things, especially. Um, you know, since we're all about housing, it's a good chance to see a lot of the changes that are coming um, uh, and, and find out if it's, you know, something you want, want to look into. Um, I do know they've revamped the, um, the initial introduction into Wildstar, the, the first few levels. Um, they've kind of catered it to, like, um, if you're a complete noob, you know, you've never played an MMO before, you, you have, have no clue what you're doing. Um, they have a, a section for you, and then if you kind of played MMOs before, but you've never played Wildstar before, then they have a section for you, and then they have a uh, another category for those that are, you know, just experts all around and just want to dive right in. Um, so they've kind of tailored it a little better uh, as far as getting you into the groove of how the game works and everything. So even if you're a, a seasoned player, um, it, it would be good to maybe have a peek at that, kind of get the feel for how it's going, and uh, maybe it'll make you feel more confident about sharing um, Wildstar with, you know, friends and, and uh, foes alike. Um, but anyway, that's uh, one uh, announcement I wanted to mention. Um, another thing is we do have a housing competition going on on Japit Realm um, for both factions. Uh, no, I don't think that's the white dye. It's cardboard, Samson. Just off the cuff there. <laughs> it looks white though, doesn't it? It looks pretty good. Um, but I'm pretty sure that's cardboard dye. Uh, anyway, um, the housing competition is being hosted by, uh, I think it's, um, oh gosh, it's kind of left my brain here. Geeks of Nexus, I believe, is, is the, um, the group that is hosting it. Um, I don't have the link on my, my uh, Twitch page, but you can access it if you are on Javit Realm, and regardless of if your Exile or Dominion is open to both factions, um, just hop on over to the official forums and the actual Javit sub forum, and it's pretty much right there at the top of the forum of that section. Um, it's called the uh, Construction Championship Clash Extreme. Um, posted again, like I said, Geeks of Nexus. Um, you have until I think it's September 4th to get your entry uh, posted um, and you need to provide information like uh, your 
plot name, um, the uh, the character that owns the plot, your main character for you know if you want to, the money to go to your main or whatever, um, if you happen to win, and uh, uh, you have the opportunity to kind of tell the theme of your plot, and if you want to give a tour, you can uh, try and arrange that with the judges. And then you provide any extra information, especially if you're not going to have a chance to hook up with the judges. Um, you know, like say uh, you have a special hidden entrance and you don't want them to miss it. You know, be sure and you know give a shout out about that. Um, but yes, anyone that has spent any time in putting together a themed home and uh, wants to show off their stuff, this is a good opportunity. Um, there's a lot of plat involved from what I know, uh, saw uh, as far as the prizes. Um, they got uh, several categories, uh, some specific to each faction and then a kind of an overall winner kind of prize. Um, but it's a, a good thing. Even if you don't think you could win, I recommend at least joining it, participating to show your support for um, community events like this because when someone puts the time and effort into putting it together, um, it's not just them posting, you know, they also have to organize the judges, um, raise the money for the prizes and things like that. Um, then if they do that and then nobody participates, it, it's kind of a, not exactly a slap in the face, but it's kind of a, a downer, I should say. So, you know, even if you are just doing it for the fun of it, you're not really expecting to win any prizes, please join. Um, it's great for people to um, pull together and support those that are putting competitions and challenges and, and events like this together. Uh, I would say that whether it's housing, uh, it could be a role-playing event, a PvP event, any of those, if you can, you know, participate and uh, just, you know, enjoy um, some time with your community, get to know some other people. Um, and yes, Samson, it's kind of a new outfit. I changed it up. Well, we recently had um, our guild uh, first year anniversary um, kind of celebration. Um, so I thought I'd wear something different and I just haven't changed out of it. So yeah, I look a little different than I usually do. Uh, anyway, um, Yes, yeah, Samson, I know there's a lot of people that you feel like are a little bit more talented, but it's still, it shouldn't hamper you from trying, because like I've told other people that have said, oh, you know, I have, I don't stand a chance. You never know what the judges are looking for, what might catch their eye, you know, you might approach something a little uniquely that they really find clever, uh, specifically like if you really have a thing that's kind of off the wall or off the cuff. Um, that can get their attention and uh, you really never know what the judges are going to um, think about it. I, I don't know if they have any specific criteria that they're given as far as, you know, they give points for this or that, you know, I have no idea how the judging process goes, but I imagine a lot of it is just up to personal preference and, and likes and dislikes and things like that. Anyway, um, so that's that. That's the two um, little reminders I wanted to throw out there before we got started. Um, I did have a list of uh, names for today that we were going to visit. Um, the first one on my list uh, is already giving me that player does not exist error. And I just visited them this morning just to kind of make sure everything was uh, up to snuff. And of course, now I'm kind of locked out of it. So on to number two. <laughs> you know, I don't order these in any particular arrangement. Uh, just well usually it's just the way i find them if i happen to cross them um uh then i'll note them down and that kind of thing uh, <laughs> and there's uh there's samson aka finrath look at his sporty outfit there got the bandana and everything kind of like rambo <laughs> needs to be in shades of red you know first blood kind of thing Anyway, uh, we're here at, um, let's see, it's Dr. Hux. Uh, when I first saw the name, I assumed it was going to be like a laboratory kind of thing, but they surprised me, of course. And that's what I love when I go visiting these places. Um, I came across this a couple of days ago while I was touring around, and um, I get the feeling it's not quite complete and I do apologize to the owner if they really are just against um, 
people seeing this ahead of time, but I figure if they've got it open to the public, they don't mind too much. So right off the bat, we've got this uh, strange little entrance thing. And, and the reason why I say I feel like it might be kind of um, incomplete is uh, you probably could get to uh, the other side if you did a lot of jumping, um, but we're going to just go ahead and go through um, this way. And uh, kind of starts off, I, I thought, well, okay, this kind of looks like a city, maybe abandoned sewer tunnel kind of thing. And uh, and the first time I come through this tunnel, I swear I walked right past this little, um, this is the spaceship. Um, I walked right past it, didn't even see it. And you're thinking, well, there's really not much in here. It's kind of, uh, you know, why are you showing this to us? Trust me, it's got a little surprise. Um, not here, but uh, outside. So, yeah, when I first come, I thought, well, this is not too, um, too fancy smancy. I like the tunnel and how they've got a lot of the debris laying around and how the, the ground kind of looks like it's like got like muck uh, collected in the pipes and stuff. Uh, whoops, going the wrong way there. So I braved it and I, I went on a little further. I thought, okay, I'm gonna, you know, I always give plots, you know, new ones that I come across, I give them a shot, even if you know, something just doesn't look quite special and then here you go how surprising is that we've got a little bay here i mean you can tell that there's like some glass laid down for the water and there's a ship there how, how awesome is that i love that it's not something you would expect to find i have seen a few boats done in the past but um Again, with anything, um, anything else, you can do. You can have like 15 people do a, a toilet custom build, and no 15 will look alike. It's almost guaranteed because there's just so many options of items you could use. Uh, but again, I get the feeling this isn't quite complete because um, it looks like the the water ends off just kind of into nothing and um, probably some canyon parts would be uh, would be added let's see now how did I get up in here before I gotta jump from from above let me get on here walk running a running jump Whee! I made it oh you show off <laughs> always showing how you could do it and I'm like doing the hard way but anyway here's here's the interior got a little kitchen um, and then I guess this is like the belly of the boat I just thought it was an interesting approach uh, you know usually you find Plenty of spaceships, but water-bound ships you don't you don't see them too often. Um, like I said, they have they have been done in the past. It's not like I've never seen one, but it's always kind of a fun treat uh, to have one pop up like that, especially when you're you're not expecting it. It's like wow, isn't? Of course, the name of the the plot, Black Ridge Bay, kind of gives it away that there's something uh, a little different, but you know, still, it's just interesting to see the different pieces that they use. And here's the, the maintenance platform as kind of the roof part. And then the lamps for the... And I like the, the use of the um, protostar lamps. Oh, let me see if I can get out here. Show that off a little better. Come on, Mr. Camera, work for me here. I think it's the, yeah, the Protostar um, maintenance lamps or whatever they're called. Can't seem to get over on the other side. I don't know if I can jump from here. Ugh. Maybe onto the fence. And then onto the roof. 
I'm so lousy at jumping. Ooh, I made it. So then you see they've got, you know, uh, I'm not sure what these are. I guess they're lamp posts of some sort. Or fence posts, maybe. I don't know offhand. Kind of floating above. That's weird. But uh, got some protection here. Old gun and some mines and things. But you can see where the water ends. I assume they were planning to add some more um, stones to kind of make it a, a little path where the boat come in. Who knows? I didn't really find anything else on the plot um, as far as any other little hidden goodies. Uh, but that doesn't mean that they might not add some later. Wow, you can really like find some odd places to be. There you go, that's a nice good shot. But yeah, I, I often say anything you can imagine just about, uh, you can build. So you know, um, some waterbound marauders or something. But it looks like it's just a uh, some of the exile floors and curved walls and then for the the rounded bit here is the a Dominion bookshelf and the fancy bar it looks like I would have never been able to figure out how to put that together that's for sure I'm horrible at mechanical stuff and and for me the boat kind of seems I don't know why but but yeah, I thought that was pretty pretty sweet. I couldn't pass up showing it because um, it took some, you know, a little engineering. It's like my son when I watch him play with Legos or when he used to play with Legos. He's a little old for that now, apparently. Um, he would have this pile of Legos and I would be looking at it and he would like, okay, I'm going to build this. And, and like a few minutes later, he's got this like... I don't know. He was building things from like World of Warcraft. He like built a little uh, griffin uh, flying pets and and uh, built the fell reaver uh, once. And I'm like, how did you figure out what pieces to use to make it look like that? And it's like, it's like I don't know. Mom. It's just yeah, I don't have have the knack for that. So anyway, that's uh, Doctor Hux's plot, um, Black Ridge Bay. Um, great for um, ship enthusiasts. So, the next one on our list is um, Roxanne McGowan. Fingers crossed it works, and it did. I'll type that in the chat for Samson in case he wants to tag along. Um, this one, again, it feels like there's probably more to it than um, I had, was able to get into last time I was here. But I thought it was, um, again, something you don't see very often. And it reminded me of your place, Samson. Yours is kind of based on, like, destroyed. Um, there was a meteor, you know, crash landed into your moon base and you've left it kind of in a shambles. And this is kind of the same thing, a um, little different approach. Um, to me, it looks more like um, a town or some kind of, you know, other building that's, you know, been bombarded with, I don't know what that's supposed to be, if it's supposed to be a missile or, or what. Um, but even in the outside here, um, where the holocrypt is, it's just everything's kind of askew and overgrown and uh, just kind of, it's hard to, to show it off, but it's uh, definitely, um, you know something bad has happened here. There's, you know, I like they use the the statue with the broken head off of it, and they've got some 
Uh, it looks to be the witch's brew making a smoking effect. But that could be um, an actual fab kit that's underneath there. I can't tell uh, with that scorched roof there. I'm not sure which one that's a part of. But definitely some kind of uh, catastrophe has happened. And I like how they've, you know, managed to bring in all of these bits to make it look like um, something's been broken. Now, I like, uh, this kind of has the feel of a, an abandoned mine um, with all of these supports and the chains and then, of course, the uh, rails on the ground. It's a clever use of um, that decor, either a fence piece or, um, yeah, I think it's a fence piece, but I, it could be the grate, I'm not sure. But then they got the little grappling plants uh, on the ceiling and the cobwebs, and it just looks, uh, it sets the theme, you know, that it's kind of uh, something bad's happened. I like the glowy effect from the uh, medical cots as a, a, a net extra sense of you know eeriness to it and of course the open flames it's always a great thing i think that's an oversized um uh, one of those grilling um of course with the pigs but you don't see the pig you just see the flame and then you come in here and Again, it reminded me of like a little town because you, you see this door here that's kind of leading off to nowhere. Um, <clears throat> and then obviously somebody survived the incident because they've got fire and a sleeping bag and you can see where people's been living here. But and as far as I know, as far as I can tell, I couldn't get anywhere else. So uh, the rest of the plot is pretty much blocked off. Um, so all that's left is uh, the spaceship here. And it's a little tricky. You have to kind of zoom in to get into it. But again, inside the spaceship, it just looks like parts of like a town. Because uh, here you've got like a little shopkeeper selling all his little wares. Maybe it's stuff he collected from the rubble and you know, he's trying to make a little bit of money. Um, all kinds of little tidbits. You know, having a little kind of like a shop like this is a great way to kind of sneak in items that you normally couldn't fit into a particular theme because you can just say, well, it's you know, something he found for sale. It's funny with the toilet paper there. I don't know why that strikes me as funny, but here have you all these plushies and pools and, and things. Toilet and paper. <laughs> okay. Um, really great job of just making it look. It it's, looks like, you know, a mess, but it's kind of like an organized mess. Um, they purposely put all of these, like, fuel cans and cardboard boxes and the strewn paper and the ramshackle fencing to really make it look... Um, Pretty, uh, pretty messy in here. These mannequins always freak me out. I always think they're really somebody standing there until you hover over them. Here we got a very nicely uh, compact little uh, office space. I think anybody that's sitting here would be roasted um, being so close to the, the fireplace there. Again, very simple. I mean, it's kind of, you know, you get the idea that's like a, a computer, personal computer thing with the keyboard and stuff. But uh, I don't know if, yeah, I'm able to get up here. Got the little bed on. He's got a cupcake there. So somebody's been having a good time. That toilet paper. I guess that's a, a, a big necessity for, you know, aftermaths. And then I assume this is like a, you kind of get the feeling it's like off limits here. I don't know what that's supposed to represent, but it's still cool looking. Um, then you got this area here. Now, if I remember right, I got stuck. And I had to find a different way to kind of get up into it because 
the fencing I think is too close so the collision is uh, blocking it so that you can't get in but what I did was let's see if I can remember how I got in last time I came over here and uh, just kind of popped up through here there we go so this is where we would have come in and then I just kind of snuck in anyway because I was clever for once but I like uh, their use of different materials to make it look like it's been broken and everything it's not just the ramshackle fence in here they've got the granite benches but they've laid them down in a way that it doesn't look like the bench anymore it just looks like lots of broken wood and pieces of sticks and things sticking out it's a really nice uh, way of decorating you know a mess. <laughs> Here's the bathroom. Got the little pool chain for the toilet there. Gotta have that. And then another little eatery thing. And then it looks like it's another way up, but I couldn't figure out how to get it. Just uh, too tight fitting. I like the the table here. That's the um, car themed uh, little coffee table and they've just kind of pushed it in so that all you see is the tire and the little ice chest. <laughs> just uh, fun ways of using stuff. I, I like that. Let's see, can we get up in here? I don't think so. But all this little mesh and, and everything that's just things they've added in. I think most of it is like, um, I like this little hole here. I don't know if, I assume that something that um, was already rebuilt is probably a, the enlarged uh, ramshackle fencing that has a hole in here and they've made it so that it sits right over the little treasure pile underneath that we can't get to. We're so close to the riches. Again, one of those things that while you can't, um, whoops, I'm just kind of bouncing all over the place. Well, I was so close, walked right off of it. Anyway, there's a there's a seat up there with some beer cans and stuff. While it's not like a full plot build, I really still find this um, incredibly interesting because, you know, you think. Did you fall through it? Oh, you can. <laughs> I guess I didn't walk in it far enough. Oh, that's pretty, pretty sneaky. Yeah, here's a little throne. My riches. And there's like little trees growing in it. That's nice. Clever. Can you get up to the top there? Oh, I don't know. Ugh. Yeah. So I, I think we've explored every inch of this place now. That was pretty good. That was a good find. I, I guess I was standing on it. See, I stand on it and I don't fall through. Anyway, I like these um, kind of builds because uh, while it looks like, oh, you just throw a bunch of things and, and it's call it good, there's some thought put into how to place certain things to make it appear, you know, broken or uh, damaged or disheveled. Um, so uh, I, you know, have respect for those that come up with these kind of things, like Samson, you know, making the fire and the broken glass and all of that that stuff. That's not something that just happens. You have to give it some thought as to how that will work. Um, where the pieces should lay so that it looks like a natural, you know, explosion kind of thing. Oh well, that was kind of freaking me out. I was like, how is that wall moving? They've got a conveyor belt thing here. That's a little weird. Anyway, that is Roxanne McGowan. Um, Roxanne's Realm. Uh, 
Um, again, the name is kind of misleading. Uh, I certainly didn't expect to, to find all of this um, messed up stuff, but it was uh, a good surprise, not a bad one. So the next one we're going to is, let me see here if I get it right. Um, Bellia, or no, Bella, Bella Foxglove. Let me see if hers works first. You know, whoops, not glide, glove. I think foxglove is a plant, maybe? I'm not sure. Sounds like one. Okay, Bella Flux, Fox Gloves. Wow, that's a tongue twister there. <laughs> and her plot's name is Fox Glove Glade. Say that three times real fast. I dare you, Samson. I dare you. So we come in and right off, we've got this nice little, um, I don't know, kind of like a gazebo almost for the... Uh, for the teleport pad. I mean, you still see that it's a teleport pad, but they've just kind of nicely got it covered. Um, if I get further away, you can see it's even capped with uh, one of the new uh, hoverboard, hover park pieces. It's got that little cone on the top. It almost looks like a witch's hat. Um, anyway, um, Foxglove Glade, pretty much Oranesque as you would expect. Um, it's got a lot of trees, but a lot of open space, which is kind of unusual for um, some of the Oren belts that I've been around. Usually they like to really crowd it up and make it look like a jungle kind of feel. Um, it's not, this looks more trimmed and um, tended, I guess. I mean, the edges, there's full of trees, but it's kind of a more organized way of going about it. So, um, there is an interior, and we're going to visit that first, because uh, uh, I'm going based on memory of what I recall. Um, while the inside is pretty interesting, it's uh, fairly small. Um, <laughs> no, I didn't hear you say it. Did you say it? Anyway, um, they've got this uh, giant statue here, and it basically covers just almost all of it. It's just got this little nubbin sticking out, and that's fun ways of hiding your um, hatch house entrance. Um, but what a creepy little feel this is. It's kind of creepy and kind of not. Uh, I like the use of the coloring. I guess it's either the noir or the sepia one. I don't remember which what it's called. But um, it's a nice change from the like the rainbow color stuff that you usually get. Um, lots of candles. Um, it kind of gives you the feeling that this is kind of a place, a special place of uh, remembrance or uh, reflection or, you know, whatever um, you think might might go on here. I didn't get the feeling that it was like a ritualistic altar, watering house or anything like that. Because here you have a, a nice little aquarium scene, the little bubbles coming from the clunky fire extinguisher. Just some simple flowers. The, the flowers that move really lend themselves nicely to um, an aquarium kind of theme because they have that movement so it looks like the water is affecting them. Um, these kind of grasses not so much but you still you know want to throw in a few bits of that here and there like they do. And then over here it's like a little a little reading nook. That's why I didn't get that this was, you know, any kind of ritualistic thing. It didn't, you know, there's no altar that I could see um, other than the, the lop one over there. But, you know, no weird weaponry or blood stains on the floor or anything like that. It's kind of a, a somber kind of private place where they come to, you know, I don't know, relax, I guess. Uh, at least they thought ahead and, and uh, put in some good lighting above the reading table there. It's just by going with candlelight that really hurt your eyes. I love the little the little lob table here. The carrots. See, we need that as a, a decor piece of carrots. 
Yes, yes. Okay, so back outside. I'm glad Samson was standing there because I couldn't see the exit. <laughs> this is so dark. Yeah. The only thing about when you um, cover up the door, you can sometimes, what, your people will come out and they'll be inside the decor. They just have to do a little quick hop. And all is well again. So again, they've used um, various uh, prefabbed uh, fab kits. They've got the wishing well one, and this is the hot springs. Not really done anything that I could tell as far as additions to it. Um, and they've kept, like I said, they've kept the, the, the plants pretty sparse through most of it. Um, which is nice in its own way. Like I said, you know, usually you come into a lot of these orange-ish type builds and everything's so foresty and overcrowded that you have trouble even seeing where you're supposed to be going, you know, the path and everything. Um, now, I know that there's a corner here, but we're just going to go through the little. A little flower garden here. All in the path. Of course, they've got it blocked off with another plant. I'm just going to walk right through it. And then they, it looks like they just got a second hot springs on the other side to kind of match it in. And then, gee, get up here. Then they have a little walkway leading right into the uh, large um, hedge maze. And I, they've opted to keep it pretty much like it is. Um, I don't know if I don't really use fab kits too much, and I don't really pay too terrible attention to most of them when they're laid out. But um, I don't know if those flowers are already there or not. But a lot of people like to put glass over the top or some other kind of cover to kind of force people to walk through it uh, the proper way, rather than allowing us to do what we're doing here and <laughs> just walking across the top. But uh, uh, what would be great is if we could get these um, little square-ish um, hedge blocks for a decor item. That way we could just go nuts and make our own hedge mazes rather than having these prefab ones. The prefab ones are great for those people that feel like they don't have um, the imagination or the time or the creativity to put something together like that but for the rest of us. That would be um, that would be awesome, and uh, an awesome addition to our, our building blocks. Have some garden building blocks. Okay, and uh, last but not least, yeah, that's what I suspected. I, like I said, I don't remember seeing them, but I wasn't for sure. So I hated to say that, you know, that's the way it is. But so you see that just kind of like a little. Um, rocky outcropping here uh, with the structure up top overlooking everything else. Now, uh, they've taken the time to decorate uh, the blocks with little plants here and there. Um, I've seen some done differently um, and still have it look nice. This, this is cute. Um, I really don't have anything negative to say about it. And when I categorized this, I went ahead and said that this was a custom-built main home. And I'll explain why here shortly. But I get the feeling that this, again, is partially incomplete because of some missing uh, bits. Um, like this looks like there could be a lot more added, um, like seats and tables and uh, whatever that might be out, out here um, other than just this little tiki bar. I mean, even the tiki bar pretty looks abandoned in, to an extent. Now, it could be that they ran out of decor uh, limit. Um, while it looks pretty sparse, um, your decor can add up pretty quickly and depending on, you know, how detailed you are, like all the little plants and things that, you know, could play a factor into how well they decorate everything else. Um, but I will keep an eye on it, and if they do um, add more, I will definitely come back for a revisit at some point. But the reason I categorized, 
categorize this place as a, a custom built home is it essentially has some of the bits. It's got this nice little kitchen and a dining room, uh, but there's no like uh, upper floors or um, bedroom. This could be possibly part of the, the living room, but there's no couches or other seating. Um, but what is here is pretty lovely. I like the, the cabinets for the, the kitchen, how they've used the exile hanging lamps for the overhead. Um, it's a really nice little touch. And the drawers, definitely a, a nice setup with those. They've got, you know, individual drawers, cabinet doors. I think those are the two of cups used as the handles. Pardon me, I have the hiccups. Got the little cabinet space here, nicely stocked. These glasses here, they're almost so transparent you can't see them unless you really get up close. Very well lit home, lots of uh, sconces all around. And I love how they've used the chandeliers as little candelabras um, because I think most of our candelabras are pretty uh, either they're Cassian style or they've got like creepy skulls on them and this is a nice alternative it's very uh, the light isn't too bright when it's shrunk down like that so it really just kind of uh, adds a little elegance to the table here I've not seen that before but definitely maybe using it myself later um, I like the construction of the building itself. Let's see if I can come out here and get a good shot. Again, they've used some of the new uh, hover park pieces to give that, uh, I don't know what you call that, little roof flare kind of thing going on. Now, it's nothing to do with the owner and their choice, but I swear this structure, if it was like red and gold, it would remind me of the McDonald's. Because I swear the McDonald's nearby has a roof just like this, I think. <laughs> Maybe I'm just hungry, I don't know what it is, but that's what it reminds me of. But I think it's a, a very cute little build. And uh, I hope uh, that the owner does come back and fleshes it out a bit more, especially uh, once we go to free to play and the, the extra decor um, space comes in. That would be really great. I'm really interested to see what they do with the, uh, the rooftop there. So that's uh, Bella Foxglove's Foxglove Glade. I, I swear that's a tongue twister. Really bad for me. Okay, and then we'll move on to, I guess that's Jet, Jet Lockwood, B-W-O-D, let me type this in on the chat, Jet, Jet Lockwood, um, this is another one I stumbled across uh, a couple of days ago. I think I had seen the name a few times, but there's another Jabbit named uh, plot. It's kind of similar, and I think I just assumed it was the same one, and I kept skipping it. And finally, I said, oh, I keep seeing this one pop up in the little list. I'll go ahead and go and have a look, and maybe the owner changed it up. But it's a completely different thing than what I remember, so I'm guessing either I'm just confused about because uh, you know when plot names have like two similar names like I'll see um, Serenity and then another one will say Serenity but and then another one will say Serenity and it's actually three different plots but uh, you know often I'm just looking at the title and not necessarily the owner's name and I can easily overlook some of these um, but uh, I had a little trouble kind of figuring out what category to put this one in is it kind of gives me the impression that it's kind of a space station feel. Um, but I, I don't know. It's kind of weird. This looks different from the last time I came over here. I thought there was more arrows. 
Um, maybe that's just me remembering wrong. But I get that this is kind of like the little um, the little bit where they they come in and land, and then this opens up, and then they can come into the hangar here, uh, like a ship or something. But I think that's a fun use of the arrows. You know, using them as arrows is kind of a, a given, but usually you see them hanging on the floor or they're used as like little um, door toppings and things and having it set into the floor is kind of cool. Now I'm not going over here because uh, we'll be seeing that as we go through the tunnel here. But again, I like how they've um, added bits into the wall here to kind of just give some character to it. You've got beams and bits of plants poking out and like the roots and, and bobbles and, and things like that. And again, I don't know if it was, if it's supposed to be something else. Uh, I, I really don't remember if I categorized it as um, spaceship or what. Um, we're going to go up inside this tunnel first. There's actually a hatch house down here, but whoops. Miss this part. Let me close this up. Let's see. Oops. Um, when you come in here, they've got like the glass open where they, you see some growth and, and rocks and mossy bits. Ugh. Keep locking us in. I thought that was a nice touch. And then you got this. Did I close it again? No, okay. You got this little bit of tunnel, and then you have some more. Um, this is actually bits outside. Uh, tunnel goes, you know, all up through, um, up above, and they've just overcrowded everything with dead trees and grass and plants, and there's all sorts of stuff to really crowd it up. So you can't really see very much going on out there. And they just choose to give you little glimpses as you go along. They could have used other kinds of piping because um, we do have the cylinders and stuff. Um, oops, getting stuck. Of the like ore and Cassian and, and but they chose to use the hover park pieces, which is fine. Um, of course the glass kind of give you sneak peeks of the outside so you can see how it snakes up and we've just been slowly climbing but you can't really see anything there's just too much growth now with the name of the plot which is the wayward javit um, kind of got the feeling that this was supposed to be a bar, um, which I'm pretty confident it's supposed to be like a bar because I mean they've got some bar bits here and this is like a countertop but it's not furnished or anything. So again I may have stumbled across one that's kind of in the process of being finished. <laughs> I have a bad habit of that but uh, I really like the little, it's like a little, a little domey place up, up above everything else. And all you see is foliage out there. There's nothing, you, you can't even see where we came in originally, I don't think. Where the uh, teleporter is, it's just covered. There's like stones and plants and trees and just everything. It's just overgrown. And crazy but I like this little this little setup it'll be interesting to see what they go with you know how they how far they take it I imagine probably uh, little tables all around the edge uh, maybe it's supposed to represent maybe some kind of a rotating thing I don't know maybe it detaches and, and it goes spin spin and get your food and get sick and that kind of thing. So I'm going to speed this up just a little bit. Sorry, but I don't get stuck. 
which I did quite a bit when I come here the first time to do the stuff. And out we come where we started. Now if we continue on down this way, then we come to the hatch house. And I like the way they've kind of presented it here. Little, little tunnel, steps down and in you go. Now, um, remember this is a hatch house. This isn't a spaceship. Um, it's not the piglet uh, model. But this is what it reminds me of, the way they've set this up. And I love how they've set this up. Um, over here you've got um, kind of like the medical ward. Uh, I guess, you know, some tools being sterilized in the sink over here. You've got the monitor and uh, the different little gadgets and stuff that you need to keep your, your crew um, healthy. And that's this one side. Then you go up into cockpit. Now that's kind of starting having a coffin there. Go up into the little cockpit area and talk about multiple gadgets here. Uh, that's just, there's so many little bits and pieces. It's just nuts. But they've actually crafted the, the cushions for the chairs, you see the double back, got the headrest the side here, and then the, the little bar stool for the cushion on the bottom. Somebody's been having fun. All of these, I, I just, I couldn't even name everything that they've used here. They've just got all sorts of stuff. That's the exile signs for the little lighted table here. There's, um, looks like a cryopod for this part here. There's just so many little bits. This nuts. This is a Dominion chair that's been kind of cushioned into this. Um, some Dominion conference tables for the side arms. Lots of little, whoops, I sat down, didn't I? Lots of little goodies. But no mistake in what it is, definitely the little cockpit area. And I like how they've set up and it even looks kind of like, you know, the window there. So you can see out, even though this is actually underground. So they've, you know, really done a good job of simulating that it's a, a spaceship. Um, if you go up here, have got uh, another little control up here. I don't know if this is like the captain's chair and down here is like his second in command or um, how that works. I imagine this is the head honcho though because he's got more little light up controllers and tables and stuff. Lots of little uh, nooks and crannies with gear and, and uh, engine parts and Buckets and bags. I, I guess this is kind of like the engine room back here. We got another little storage area. A little tiny thing, but everything's kind of roped in. Weird. And I, I love the little um, stairway here. They're using the uh, the netting shelves for the stairs and you just go poop, sit down in there just like Samson did and then he's in control of everything look at all, how clever that is made got the Tua Tech loading arm for the, the seat and that's what's holding the pillow, the little clamper Really niftily done. Remember, this isn't the piglet. This is an underground bunker that they've modified to, to have that look. Now, these I adore, the little um, sleeping pods. Um, first, though, um, this is the little TV room area that they have. 
very simple, but you know, you get the idea that that's a, a little widescreen TV, flat screen thing. And then uh, over here is the, the little kitchen. Got your basics. Looks like somebody's not done the dishes in a while. Little extra storage space, and then we go to our first little, I don't know, personnel cubicle thing. And how cool is is that? It looks like it's a starry sky. I, I really don't know what they used to do that. I think it's, I don't know what that is. Pump down eyeballs or something from those purple things. You know what I'm talking about? Those little splotchy eyeball things. Um, I'm not sure what that is, but that's what it reminds me of. It's like they've just been shrunk down and they just used a bunch of them. And the movement of the eye kind of makes it look like a sparkling. But then they've used like cobwebs to kind of muffle it a bit. They've also got the um, medical cots giving that bluish glow. And then having that to kind of look like the um, I don't know, a side engine or something, but that's really a nifty effect to giving that, that underground <laughs> building um, look like it's actually outside somewhere. It's, it's really cool. I don't know, maybe it's like um, in their head, the, the tunnel and the facility that is above this is actually, you know, a big ship and we're kind of like... Um, attached at the bottom, you know, just kind of hugging the bottom of the ship and able to go to and fro and we're actually uh, can just take off any time. But yeah, I don't know how they did that, but that was very, very nifty done. I can get myself up in here. Okay, so this is a uh, little cubicle number two. A little bit more lived in feel. I mean, there's a lot of little personal articles, uh, little trophies and, and things little desk and the bed and everything. I, I like the way they've you know divvied this up into these little little individual and they each have their own little personality kind of thing. There's a different one. He's more into the techie stuff. He's got his wall covered in all this information. A little bit more cozy. He's got a fireplace and a, his own pop machine. And a dead bird. Oh, poor birdie. And then this one appears to be um, unclaimed as yet. I can get up there. It's the only thing that bugs me is the stairs aren't quite um, smoothly. Um, ramped but um, you know this would be an empty one so you know maybe new crew member comes on and, and then they can decorate it themselves and say hey I'd like to have this or that and maybe a girly one comes in and just got all her plushies and stuff and flowers and who knows what but I thought this was a really nice uh, interesting way of doing the bunker house uh, usually the bunker house really looks um, oversized and there's just so many rooms and this feels more compact um, but you know it's on purpose uh, it feels a little claustrophobic but you know on a cramped ship with a bunch of people and having you know limited space every bit of space is precious you know you're gonna have that cramped feel and that's exactly what you get in this and I just thought that was a really nice thing approach to um, an otherwise uh, really big space. Uh, I don't even know if they used the entire amount of space uh, that's provided in the bunker house, but that was uh, definitely unexpected when I come here the first time. So that's uh, Jet Lockwood's The Wayward Jabot. Um, so that's the four main houses I wanted to have a look at. Now I do have another one, kind of a bonus home. Um, their home it has a theme it's kind of like a spaceport kind of thing um, but uh, 
if I remember right, to be honest, I wasn't quite impressed with the spaceport part of it. It's all of the bits that they've got on the spaceport um, that really make it. And I think you'll understand what I'm talking about when we go there. Um, so let's visit, um, hopefully, his works. Um, Bucky Barnes, uh, no, Bucky O'Hare. Bucky Barnes is somebody else. Bucky O'Hare. And this will be the last one for today. For today. Um, yeah, Spaceport Delta 7 is the title. And as you can see what I mean by it's kind of like, at first glance, it doesn't look all that impressive because it just looks like a bunch of ships um, on some platforms. It's, there's no big structure, building, um, no uh, lots of levels and little, you know, shops and things like that you would expect at a spaceport. But it does have its charms. So when you come into a place that kind of looks like that, like this, um, take the time to take a good close look um, at what's going on. And I'm very glad I did. And I, I try to do that with everybody's home that I come across because you just never know what's kind of hiding in the corners. Um, so first off, we're kind of guided um, to our first little, I guess it's a snack area. Uh, looks to be occupied by a couple of lop. So we got the taco bar here and then a few tables um, for people to, to eat and stuff. Now, granted, um, whoever put this together, there's some little discrepancies here. The cups are floating off the table. Um, it could be that maybe they resized it and forgot to move it down or something. It's just little minor things like that. Um, I'm happy to overlook those because I know what's uh, what else is on here. So, <laughs> um, so the first little platform, uh, you've got what looks to be, uh, I don't know, where a ship would maybe attach itself if it's coming in for repairs or something. Or maybe it's to represent where they're putting one together. You've got the, the little arm here and everything. But then when you move to the next platform, what does this remind you of, Samson? It looks like it's Baby, the baby of the ship we visited earlier. They've got like some missiles on the bottom. They've got a nice little uh, like super rocket engine back here. And that's just um, uh, really bright lights with... Um, the feeding troughs, looks like three of them placed together to kind of give it that exhaust look. Um, silver barrels, those are the um, orange orange windows. Uh, Chua tank, I think. And uh, let's see if I can get up there. Uh, a closer look at some of the bits on the top. Got the little captain's wheel and benches. Just a, a little space boat. Space ship. <laughs> Got the uh, hanging wire for the little bit here and then a pointy drinking uh, spear for a little bit here. Then we go to the next one. And here's another version of a spacecraft. They've got uh, rockets attached to looks like retainer walls with um, Merg dynamite sticking out and a cryopod kind of thing. Um, I think those are the Dominion leaking toxic tanks for the back end. If I can get around here without falling off. Mm, that was close. And again, they're using the the nice bright light with the uh, the uh, feeding troughs as the little exhaust bits. Bucky O'Hare was the name of a cartoon about some kind of green alien rabbit space captain. <laughs> well, there's some trivia for you. I, know, I didn't know that. Um, I know there's a Bucky Barnes. Um, I have his house listed somewhere, I think. Um, 
And I, I want to say, is that the one that's from Captain America? Bucky Barnes? Is that his buddy's name? I don't know. That's what it reminded me of. And that's probably why I said it in the first place. I don't know if there's anything in here. I didn't open it last time. Kind of creepy where it's so dark and black, though. I feel like you're going to fall right in. Oh, you trapped me. Gotta, gotta get out before I get stuck in it again. Okay, so we have another um, little platform here. And for any of you Star Wars fans, I'm sure you'll recognize this one um, that we're about to come up on here. Because if I'm not mistaken, this is supposed to be like a little TIE fighter. How funky is that? <laughs> Looks like um, a portal window for the front and several different types of domes. I got the Cassian one here and the two ones on either side. These look like the portable planters um, butted up together. Uh, retainer walls back to the, you know, end to end for the arms here. And then uh, and two of floors. And it looks like, I guess it's pillars to make that cross fit. Could be metal planks. I think that's what that is. A couple metal planks and then another dome. But how fun is that? You know, for anybody that's looking for um, Star Wars themed stuff, definitely a, a little plus. So I, I take it that this is kind of like a spaceport for all types of vehicles because he's, you name it, he's just about got it in here. Um, so on to the next platform. Now this one's a double one. Um, I don't know if this is part of Fab Kit or not. I think it's something he actually built. Uh, what it reminds me of, anyways. Got a little workshop here um, underneath. And uh, another part of it down below. And then he's got this bit up here. Lots of wires and gadgets and tanks and, and all sorts of stuff. Lots of use of the retainer walls. Okay, there's nothing on that platform, so we'll go back down. I like the stairs here that he's done. It's, I honestly, when I first came, I thought this was just a fab kit. Um, uh, I second look, it looks more um, player built. Not that it's you know crappily done. It's just uh, I don't see anything here that really reminds me of anything. Of but he sure has added a lot of stuff in here. A lot of detail. Lots of, lots of bits. Okay, let's see. Where's the next one? Let's see. I guess that would be the ship here. This one's a little bit fancy. This one reminds me of a pirate ship. We'll get to the plane here in a little bit. There's just so many little things you want to look at. It's like, oop, oop, oop. Um, but um, here he's made good use of the uh, tiki bar. Um, you got the silver uh, kegs for the, I guess, the cannon guns. And then the little tiki bars give that little funky face look on there. Ladder for part of the railing. We've got the um, banners as the sails. He could have probably um, tried to do a couple more. The Merg banners are kind of hard to get a hold of, um, so he might not have been able to get a hold of more than one or two, but maybe if he had been able to add two or three straight across, that would have you know, made it a little bit more uh, grand. But talk about pretty snazzy anyway. Uh, nice use of the windows. Again, using the orange orange window for uh, like a fire effect. And uh, I think those are the bottoms or the tops of the... Uh, oh, the little cage with the bird in it. The name escapes me, but you know that's what it is. <laughs> 
Yeah, walk the plank. I don't know if I'd want any sharks around anyway. We might have some hidden somewhere. Okay, inside we can go. And here's the little, I guess it's the captain's uh, quarters. Don't mind the jittering. Um, that's just my, my own settings kind of wigs it out. The only thing that he might could change um, now that we have the glass is to actually make these windows see-through by uh, putting in glass windows there. Um, but you know, maybe he just liked the look of the bars on the one. But here he's even made little um, cabinets using the bottles for the handles. Little makeshift, but you know, useful, recognizable as little trunks and, and cabinets and things. Okay, then we'll go uh, down inside. What do you call this? The, the gully? The galley? All the little bombs. Little control here. And it's, it's kind of simple, but it's really nicely done. I, I like uh, the concept for sure. Even got the nice use of the fancy bars, building up that front end and then having that little outing part here. Really nice. I say really nice a lot, but it really is. It's really nice. <laughs> Okay, here we have, I don't know, the Red Baron's plane. Waiting for Snoopy to come out and hop in. But how cute is that? I mean, that's like adorable. And look at the different pieces that they use. There's like um, the decking uh, walkways here. The Marauder signs, which I always found to be super gaudy. But this, I mean, that would just look... Totally wrong without those those marauder faces. Hey, Fishborn. Yeah, um, definitely a great ship. I, I love this pod because it's got so many varieties of different vehicles, um, spaceships and things, and this plane is no different. Um, triangle pieces. Uh, you've got uh, pieces from the hover park. Uh, Section. I can't even name what pieces those are because there's like 90 of them, so I don't keep track of every single one. But uh, got some chua cushions for the seat. Got a hammer for the little um, throttle thing there, and then the control panel for that. Two by fours for the little bits between the wings. And, and look at that propeller there. I guess that's, what is that? Um, kitchen knives? The wooden handle knife, I think. See, when I do the, the blades for something like that, I always go for the swords. Uh, no, uh, I didn't make it to Gamescom this year, Fishborn. Um, I went to last year's, and they actually had a booth and stuff, but they didn't do it a community event like they did this year. But uh, they didn't mention that they were going to be doing a community event until just a few days prior, and by then um, all the tickets were sold out as far as I know. So even if I'd wanted to get into it, it would have been too late. Um, and I think those are the Chua shelves. No, exile shells, that's what that is, given that little ribbed feature there. Maybe you can see it better on the side. It's the exile. I've used that for keyboards um, for a piano before. That's a really cute plane. Uh, yeah, I would have loved to have gotten hold of a t-shirt. So, grats on that. Here we have another kind of, I don't know, 2B spaceship thing. Again, it's got a lot of little interesting pieces to it. Um, kind of hard to see in the dark here, but you got like hammer for extra little guns here, I guess. And uh, I think those are the Elden arches or something. 
Oops. My camera's going squarely. Trying to get a good shot. I like the little <laughs> picture of the lady on there. Again, he's found interesting uses for a lot of objects to make it look like lit up. Um, yeah, well, because of the crowds and how it was last year, I had a hard time trying to convince my husband that it's a nice idea. Cause I'm the only one that really wanted to go. Um, maybe next year, though. Maybe they'll have even more stuff. What would be great is if they just opened up a merchandise shop. How'd you get up there, Samson? Oh, there we go. It's just me being lousy at jumping again. Get in. I like the little open hatch here. Enough room for a couple passengers. Wonder where the barf bags are, because I would need those because I'm really bad with heights and stuff. Motion. Okay, then we've got another little eating area here. Kind of mirrors the other one, and again, some of the cups are a little floaty, but that's not a big deal. He more than makes up for it with all these little nifty contraptions. Now, again, we had one little snippet of Star Wars, but here's another one. You know what this is, Samson? Kind of hard to see because it's got it right here in the shadow of the spaceship, but... <laughs> well, sometimes uh, Mr. Moo likes to um, screen off uh, things that maybe are mistaken as um, spam, so... But yeah, that's R2-D2 here. Um, Looks like hammer for the little arm bits and then uh, the retainer walls for his little rolly bits on the bottom. Uh, a bottle sticking out here. Um, the top looks to be um, a tank end. I think it's the, the bend tank. I'm not sure what he's got making the red red light, if it's uh, one of those uh, red party lanterns or what. Another bottle top for the little gadget up there. Just a, a number of pieces that they, they've used for all these little, but clearly you know what it is just by looking at it. It's a fun little thing to add. I like that stuff. Okay, it looks like we got a couple more um, to visit. Now, I don't know if this is supposed to be a ship or anything. It's, I think it's just a gun. They stuck out here. Still got some cool effects. And I've seen people use this um, particular uh, item in many ways where they've got this using as the exhaust down here and having this as part of the walls and bits. Anything that's got lighting and, and, and all of that is, is really good. Well, I just called it R2-D2. It may be something else. It's one of those little bot thingies. At least I knew it was Star Wars. My mom would say Star Trek and we'd go like, no, that's a different thing, Mom. So here's another little ship. Um, it's an Osun piece. Uh, looks like uh, ship hand lockers, different variety of rockets. Uh, well, if you always find the way onto these things, okay, how do you do that? There we go. Some retainer walls. Uh, I think that's uh, a body scanner, I think, it's given the blue bits and everything. Of course, the little marauder chair and all the little doodads and things. Take some cleverness to, to put all this. I mean, it's basically just a, a little lot of junk and poop, you put it together and it'd be awesome if you could actually ride some of these things. 
Okay, so I think that's all the things outside. Now, I don't remember if he's actually got anything on the inside. Um, I think most of it was all interior. Uh, I mean, all of the, the really super nifty stuff was outside all of the ships. But we'll have a look in here anyway. Um, got your little, I don't know, engine room, I guess. Lots of moving parts. All the little lightning effects and fans twirling around. I don't have my sound up, so I imagine it's probably pretty loud, too. Uh, well, I've seen um, uh, Twitter images uh, and people posting images of them, and they're pretty nice. Um, I did make the comment to my husband that the, the Orin one, uh, at least in the picture that someone uh, tweeted, it looked like, um, it looked like Shrek. Because it looked green, and the way they had the ears cut off in the picture, it just looked like the little crack ears. Uh, this is a little medical lab corner here. And uh, some lockers, and I don't know, can can you get this door to work for you? Does that door work for you, Samson? In here, the little Draken door. It didn't work for me earlier, and it doesn't seem to be working now either, so I don't know. I don't know if it's the way they've positioned it in the wall or what. It's just not it's not working for me. But, you know, got this little storage space. And we can only imagine what's behind the door. It doesn't look like Samson can get it to work either. Um, for whatever reason, sometimes doors kind of bug out. But here's the the bridge, I guess, the, the, where the captain is and all his little peons. I like the captain's chair. It's not actually a functioning chair, but, you know, there's no mistaking that that's like the head honcho chair. It's kind of got this grand little throne thing going on. But yeah, I don't know. I would assume it's probably the personal quarters. But for whatever reason, it doesn't want to work. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to work either. <laughs> oh, gosh. No, I don't, I don't think that works. <laughs> it would be nice. But I like how they use the, the ladders as the railing. I've done that before. Now that we have these railings, you know, it's not as necessary, but it's still kind of nice to see. So yeah, that is a Bucky O'Hare's uh, Spaceport Delta 7 plot. Um, so definitely, if you see a plot, you know, it's easy to judge a plot by a first glance and say, oh my gosh, this just looks kind of like no care has been taken. Um, trust me, uh, you may surprise yourself if you come across a few like this and um, find all of the little goodies hidden around because you know from a distance you don't notice that a lot of that other stuff is there i mean even the ship is kind of hard to make out from this distance and it's uh would be a real shame if you missed out on that because you were like oh this looks like junk and zip back out um for me when i'm doing the random uh housing visits even if there's absolutely nothing on the plot except the house i'll still go take a look inside the house because Sometimes people just, you know, maybe they haven't had a chance to really work on the exterior and everything's on the interior, so. Not sure what you mean, Fishborn. Um, you talking about like if you put something together and then you want to get rid of it and then later you want to call it back? Uh, no, it's not a new one, Samson. Sirona's been there for quite a while. Um, probably just something you've had because she's been on my list for uh, a long time. Um, but yeah, it's an awesome build. It definitely is. Um, I think I've got about four or five of Severians. Probably more than that because I think they've got a few on uh, uh, Dominion side as well. Yeah, 
I just call them Severian because I've got like, uh, let me see, hold on. And I will check to make sure. Let's see. Yeah, I've got Kalehas um, on there. I've got Kalida Severion. I've got Serona Severion. Susilos Severion. That's four there, and I'm sure there's like two or three on um, Dominion side as well. Um, all of Severion's plots are really um, out of this world. Um, well, see, that's why you should look at my list in the forums because I have them all there. Um, they're in, you know, they're different categories depending on what theme they went with. Um, but yeah, in fact, I'm getting ready to upload um, an updated list. Um, there's like a ton of new ones I'm adding, including some of the ones I've showed off today. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, I really love it when people suggest homes but as a general rule i usually already have them on the list um or they're in preparation to be on the list because i i don't update the list every time i get a new one i kind of wait till i have a little bunch because every time i update it i change the ones that say new um i get rid of that and just add it to the new ones well if i did that every time i come across one then people would be kind of like well she hasn't added very many new ones because I wouldn't see, you know, the vast majority of ones weren't new, so I tend to, like, wait a couple weeks before I update. Um, I do that mostly with Dominion, because usually I just don't come across very many on that side. But Exile, yeah, I've probably got, let's see, I've got uh, one, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, roughly fifteen new homes that are going to be listed on there. So definitely check out that, uh, that uh, list on the forums because, uh, yeah, I can imagine that it's pretty fun to, to spot them yourself. Um, it's like uh, today, <laughs> I was, uh, I think it was like, I don't know, like 15 minutes before we were getting ready to do the, the stream today. And I thought, well, I'll just kind of do some little random visiting. And I saw this one, I was like, oh, that's a new name I haven't seen before. Popped in, and it just so happened that the owner had only opened it up maybe 20 minutes before the public. And it was just because somebody wanted to, to visit and have a look around and they were getting ready to close it up uh, to private again. So I happened to just kind of come across it at the right moment. Um, but I've already um, noted them down and, and uh, asked them to let me know when their plot goes live because uh, it was a pretty cool looking plot. Um, but again, it's back to private as far as I know and it's not planning on opening it up uh, directly. So. We'll have to wait and see on that. But, uh, <laughs> well, it could be that uh, Severion takes uh, at least a couple of the prizes because some of those builds are pretty astounding to what they can come up with. Um, but uh, uh, there's still quite a, quite a while before um, the due date is end. And from experience from the last contest, a lot of them like to wait to the last minute. So there may be some surprise, some surprise entries that could give them a run for their money. But uh, hopefully, you know, um, lots of people join in. Like I said, it's really, it, it would be fun to win, but um, it's more just the joy of, uh, you know, being part of a community event and, uh, you know, it's an extra way of getting people to kind of see uh, what you worked on um, so that all of your time and your blood and sweat and tears doesn't go for naught. Um, and uh, it's another way, you know, while I've done some of my uh, tours and stuff, uh, it's another way of getting another little keepsake if they make a video because I'm pretty sure um, they did that in the last few 
Now, they haven't really said that they're going to do that with this one. I just assume so. But, you know, if they if they don't, you know, okay. But if they do, that's, again, another way of um, having someone come around and you don't have to listen to me rant about it. But, uh, yeah, uh, never, you never know. You never know. Um, I noticed they entered, like, all of their plots um, because I, I guess there's not a specific in the scene that says you can only enter one, you know. So there's several that are entering more than one. Um, so yeah, they're bound to get at least one prize because uh, most of their builds are pretty awesome. So, but you know, if if you just went about looking at it like, well, I don't stand a chance, then uh, of course you don't. If you don't enter, you, you obviously don't stand a chance. So I, I strongly say uh, give it a try. Um, even if you don't have confidence in your own work. Exactly, Black, exactly. Um, the worst that can happen is that, well, somebody else wins. You know, big deal. It doesn't mess up your plot any. Um, but uh, it certainly, you know, gives people um, that probably don't watch my show um, more ideas about what they could uh, do. They say, hey, that was a pretty cool idea for that crashed up, moon base maybe i'll do something like that and, and that kind of thing but uh, yeah definitely um uh, give it a try so anybody on uh, javit realm whether you're dominion or exile definitely um enter give it a shot because uh, like i said you never know what the judges are looking for i don't even know who the judges are um how many they have uh, or anything like that but but yeah it's gonna be a uh, fun to see uh, I'm even looking forward to seeing how the entity ones turned out um, even though we don't act, have access to them I I know there's a lot of avid builders over there and, and uh, usually they do a video of that one too so it's a good chance to be able to kind of have a sneak peek of what all kinds of goodies are going on over there because there are a few that like me and a few others that like to Post videos of their stuff but there's a lot of them that actually don't um, and again that's one of the reasons why I do this, this show so that people that don't make videos of their stuff or post um, going around you know bragging about the stuff that they made this is their chance to shine a little bit um, to get a little bit of a spotlight on them when otherwise they wouldn't and um, you know because when you even though they have their plot public, a lot of people just avoid that public thing like crazy because 90% of the time you just come across junk plots. They're completely empty, don't even have a, a house. I mean, I've come across like, you know, 10 plots today that had like just the the construction site. I mean, they hadn't even put anything on it, not even a little, a little prefab home, let alone decorated anything. And that can be, you know, disheartening for a lot of people that are visiting. And uh, again, that's why I started that list that I, that I have um, in the videos here, um, just to kind of get the word out and show all of these different ideas and help inspire others to get in on it. Because um, this is really, my end game here is, is the housing, because there's no end to it. Even if they never make another piece of decor, there's still tons of things you can do with what you already have. Um, I don't think that'll ever happen, um, but, you know, if it came to that, there's there's still tons of potential. I mean, this plot is like a prime example here. He's like thought up like a dozen or more different little contraptions out of basically the same materials, you know. And, uh, you know, how, how more inspirational is that than to say, hey, you know. Whatever you can think of, you can build, and that's 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 the fun part. So yeah, um, so reminder on the uh, the Geeks of Nexus uh, housing competition uh, that is currently going on. They are accepting entries right now. If you're on Javit Realm, uh, either faction, Dominion or Exile, uh, drop by the Javit Realm sub forum in the main uh, Wildstar forums and their post is pretty much right at the top um, 
click it, read all the information about the rules and prizes and the dates. Uh, I think you have until September 4th to enter your plot, and I think it's September 20th is when they will announce the winner on a live podcast, from what I understand. Um, as well, for anyone as kind of on the fence about whether or not they want to get into uh, Wildstar or they're hesitant about, you know, what's coming in the free-to-play um, when that goes live in the fall, you know, what kind of changes are they making? If you've been a Wildstar player in the past and you're kind of coming back into it and you're like a little concerned about some of the things you've been hearing people talk about, like that changes, housing changes, um, they're doing changes to like world bosses. Um, there's a lot of changes with just the general starter zones and how you come into the game or, and, and from the very get-go, how it treats you. Um, whether you're uh, inexperienced in total, um, whether you have a little bit of MMO experience but you've never played Wall Street, or if you're a veteran, you know, they've got the scenario for all three. Um, there's changes to uh, the, the wardrobe, we've got new systems coming in, like um, we got daily rewards coming in where you have a every day you log in, there's a little gift waiting for you. Um, there's loyalty rewards um, so that if you are subscribed or otherwise uh, putting money into uh, the company, the game, um, you get points uh, from that. There's the cash shop coming, a lot of people are at their concerns about how that's going to work, um, all of it. Now's the chance to kind of get in and take a, uh, an early look and have the opportunity to, you know, provide feedback on what you feel is working well and what isn't working well. Um, there is a link on my uh, Twitch page um, at, in the resources section for the uh, Wildstar free-to-play beta. It is a closed beta. So um, current subscribers are, already have had access for uh, a week or two, um, but now they're opening it up to anyone that uh, signs up and uh, then I guess they're going to be like inviting folks in waves or maybe it's just kind of a, you know, if you're signed up, you're in. I, I don't know how that's going to work, but all of the information is on that page. They got links to the FAQ. Um, links to the forums where you can put in your, your feedback on different uh, bits of the game. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, can't say enough about uh, encouraging people to give it a try. Um, if you are someone that came in in the beginning and you left and you're just now thinking about coming back, definitely come in because it has changed. Even now it's different than what we started out with and, and the changes that are coming are just going to make it even more pronounced um, so it's all been positive change in my eyes but I'm sure there's others that would disagree with me um, but I'm kind of more of a laid-back casual player so uh, some of the the things like class balance I really don't pay too much attention to that I know that's probably a horrible thing to say but you know as long as I'm having fun and I'm dying less often than the mobs that I'm attacking I'm good you know um, I might have a little concern if, you know, I take one step and a croak and take another step and a croak again and take another step and a croak again, then there might be some issues, but, you know, if it's, the ratio is in my favor, we're, we're, we're doing okay, so I don't really pay much attention to anything about that, but, um, uh, yeah, um, thank you for joining me, um, thank you, Samson, for tagging along and, and uh, helping me figure out where to jump so I can get into this stuff. But uh, I hope you guys have a good day, and uh, be sure and uh, check back again. Um, I do this uh, house tour stuff every week, every Wednesday, 1 p.m. CET time or CES, CEST time, whatever it is now this time of year. Um, and we alternate between the factions, so this week was Exile, so that means next week will be Dominion. Um, hopefully I can find enough Dominion uh, homes uh, that uh, kind of fit my criteria to, to look at. If not, we'll figure out something else to do. Um, but um, maybe I'll have to start leveling my Chua beyond 14 and 
make some money on him, so maybe I can start building some junk on his plot. I don't know. But we'll figure something out, and um, hopefully you join again. Um, I appreciate the views, I appreciate the follows, and um, I hope to see you again soon. Until then, take care and bye-bye.